Hello and welcome to the big picture. Defense procurement for decades has been plagued by controversies and scams in India. Hardly any major defense procurement has escaped controversies. The defense contractors, including large foreign companies, have come under a cloud with their shady dealings or at least allegations of shady dealings. This has resulted in many of them getting blacklisted over the last several years. Some have felt that the blacklisting of these companies has resulted in slowing down of the defense procurement and is also affecting the defense preparedness of the Indian military. On the other hand, the need to punish corrupt, corrupt defense contractors and the political significance of it cannot be undermined. In the light of all this, the government has finalized a draft of the new blacklist, defense blacklisting policy according to Defense Minister Manohar Parikar. What is this new policy and how will it help or affect the defense purchases? We will discuss this today with Yogendra Narayan, former Defense Secretary, Government of India, Air Vice Marshal, retired Kapil Kak, Defense Analyst, Major General, retired Ashok Mehta, and Commodore Uday Baskar, of Director for Society for Policy Studies. And on the, okay, the, welcome to all of you. Uh, Air Marshal, how do you look at this new uh, defense policy which, we, uh, which the defense minister is talking about? Well, as you said, uh, defense contracts have been, over decades, been always, in a sense, muddied by controversies which surround these contracts because monies involved are huge. Jeep scandal, 1948. Beaufort's well-known, and what is not so well-known is the Beaufort syndrome it created in, a, in, the, in, the, in the construct where no decision-making was done because you had this fear that there may be a kind of a criminality attached to your decision. Uh, we have known of Coffin Gate, we have known of 2007, uh, that low-level QRM which resulted in a former naval chief and the defense minister be, being indicted more in the media than in actual practice. I think, Girish, what you said is right. The ideal is can you strike a good balance between, uh, you know, sitting on that moral hill of high ground and ensuring that preparedness is in place. Unfortunately, we have confused ourselves in that space. That balance has not and been stuck so it far. It started primarily with uh, Defence Minister Anthony, uh, whose moral ground position, it was very well known, he was an extremely honest politician all his life, from the day he joined politics. But he was not a good Defence Minister because he was uncaring of the impact of his decision making, which was staccato, knee jerk not as a result of a considered policy, and that affected so many defence purchases. I think what uh, Defence Minister Parikar has done, that the three stages which were involved uh, in blacklisting have now been further nuanced by ensuring that you do not do anything knee-jerk and there is a policy by which there is a gradation of op options the ministry has in terms of penalties that can be imposed on the contract stage, if there is a violation of the integrity pact, if there is criminality, there is undisclosed uh, agents who have been brought in, bribe has been paid, or as has been highlighted by the Scopin uh, <laughs> scandal <laughs> now, uh, that in case there are any documents which have been stolen. We don't know where those documents have been stolen, don't look to have been stolen from India. So I think this is a very good opportunity. So this, is, this, this nuanced format is, is the best thing you think? At the moment, it's an extremely complex issue. You know, the question of uh, trying to straddle that ground between two extremes is very complex. In, uh, the implications are so huge. The consequences of the defense services pre preparedness and therefore the security and defense of the nation are so huge that in this you have to do graded steps. Okay, Mr. Mr. Yogendra Narayan, you think that you know this this uh, nuanced situation, with nuanced approach, which which the defense minister is talking about. He says that unless there is clear evidence of evidence of corruption or criminality, no blacklisting will be done. Now the question is, when does this kind of a situation arise that you know there is certain there, that you are certain that there is corruption or criminality? 
Uh, my opinion has been always that if uh, any weapon system or uh, platform has been tested on the field and it has been found to be appropriate for use by the defense forces, then that is a separate issue and the question of allegations of taking money, bribe or whatever, whatever other malfeasance is, is another question. We should not stop the purchase of the weapons if they are found after field trials to be most uh, apt for use. Action against the officials can be taken separately if malfeasance is found or if there are allegations of corruption. But if you stop the procurement of weapons, if you blacklist an organization which, is, uh, which has come up with this advanced technology, then I am sorry to say we will be in a very sorry sta state of affairs. Therefore, my, my position and stand has been clear that if the weapon and their platform systems are good, then we should go ahead whether there has been allegations of corruption and bribery, etc., which can be investigated separately. So, uh, I am very clear that these new guidelines that have been uh, now drafted by the government can be an enabling um, uh, safety for the officers, but they should not stop the procurement of uh, uh, equipments if they are found to be valid and um, trustworthy on the ground and if they can be utilized by our defense forces. Okay. We should not penalize our country for the sake of a few bad men. Okay. General Mehta? As far as defense preparedness yeah, is concerned. I think concerned. there are two if, things to start with. One is... Well, I, I just want to I ask one more quick question there. The, the, the defense minister has clearly said, even if the CBI is examining the allegations against them, there will be no blacklisting. And, you know, the, the com we'll continue to buy from these companies because you don't know how long the CBI will take to find out. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll address that point uh, in a short while. What I was going to say is that this policy was promised on 1st of January 2015. It is still not... It is ready, but it has gone to the law ministry. Right. And you can... I can bet that this will take another six months to get ready. Now, 15 companies are already blacklisted. 24 companies are under scrutiny by the Ministry of Defense. Those, those companies have not been delisted. And the result of the previous policy has been a, a detrimental to the modernization of the armed forces. And Kapil has given you a list of the equipment that has so far been affected. I mean, just look at the Augusta Westland case. In case of Augusta Westland, there are 39 subsidiaries of Augusta Westland. Uh, Mr. Parikar in the Rajya Sabha said that, look, I am not going to blacklist these companies because this will affect the program of the Navy, because Navy is buying a lot of equipment for their warships. So th the point that has to be made here is uh, that there was a gentleman called Bernard Gray. Bernard Gray is a Brit. And Bernard Gray came up with this solution when the Brits ran into trouble balancing probity with operational readiness. This is the, the nub of the problem. And I, I think most of us here so far who have spoken are saying, including you, that it is better to get the operational equipment on time and probity being probity. It doesn't mean that you condone corruption. You have so many other ways of dealing with this problem, like Bernard Gray came out with penalties with, uh, with, with blacklisting for sh short periods uh, by naming and shaming companies and a host of other measures that Mr. Gray, who is now the advisor to the defense minister, he is chief of logist operational logistics in the British uh, government. And we have taken the, the, the current, them. we have taken 
in fact, we have lifted a lot of clauses from the Bernard Gray recommendations, which were made four years ago. And I'm so happy that we have finally, we are going to get a system that will, uh, that will favor the procurement of equipment and not let that stagnate simply because you want to ensure that you are standing on moral high ground. Okay. Um, Uday, Uday the, the question, see, the question is that politics is involved in this. In all the controversies, it is the political nature of the controversies which create this kind of situation which leads to, which has led to ministers and the government black, blacklisting these companies. They are actually playing safe. You think dramatically things will change now? Short answer is no. I think just as my other co-panelists have said, this is an issue that has plagued the Indian system for decades. Exactly. I recall Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi, when we had the Bofors and the HTW scandal, we are talking about the mid-1980s. Right. From then to now, I am afraid the Indian higher defence decision-making system, of which procurement is one aspect, has been plagued by what you might call as the cross of the Bofors and the HTW. While Mr. Parikar's statement is welcome that blacklisting will not be done in this impulsive manner, it will not be done in a petulant manner, it would not be done for political considerations, and that the operational requirements of the armed forces would be kept in mind, is welcome, but it's also long overdue. As Ashok has said, this has been going on since 2015. The Modi government came to power in 2014, and they had made a number of promises about setting right many of the inadequacies in defense acquisition, modernization, and issues like blacklisting of companies. But I'm afraid we are still caught in the Yes Minister, meaning that the bureaucracy and the various rules and regulations, if you look at DPP, Defense Procurement, it's gone through many iterations. And in a conference that we had recently with some of the manufacturers, who obviously do not want to say anything in public, lest they tread on the toes of the government of India, they say that it's a nightmare dealing with the new regulations and the compliance. And I think when Mr. Parikar says that now they'll review the blacklisting, it is welcome. But I don't think it'll happen in a hurry because our systemic sort of requirements have slowed everything down. And I would be very, very happy if Mr. Parikar is able to push this and ensure that the preparedness of the armed forces is not adversely affected. And I have a last point that I bring up every time. We are talking about the submarines, the Scorpion. You and I discussed this, Girish. The same Modi government had blacklisted the Italian manufacturer for some other transgression. Fin Mechanica. And the net result is our Scorpion today does not have a torpedo. Now, these are the kind of, shall we say, linkages that the politician in India needs to address. And he must be supported by a very nimble bureaucracy that keeps the point that Mr. Yogendra Narayan made. That is, do not let the operational requirements of the armed forces be degraded or delayed. Alas, the picture is not optimistic at all. Uh, Air Marshal, the question is, uh, Mr. Yogendra Narayan says that, you know, once there are field trials have been held and this, these equipments have been cleared at the field trials level, whatever happens later, the procurement proce process should not stop. Is it a practical thing? You know, look at it politically also. Yeah, it has a... I mean, the point made is excellent. I, I have no problems. But as they say, it is the translation of... I'm sorry, point. sorry to intervene. Yeah. And the minister says that, you know, even if the CBI inquiry is going on, we'll still continue. No, you, will, you will have to look at this in, from the political angle also. Uh, there are two issues here. One is the point that has been made that the weapon system must be the best. Let me suggest both to Mr. Yudhar Narayan and our viewers that all this muck takes place after it has left the armed forces headquarters in terms of field trials and everything else. Operational, let me explain. The operation... At what level, is, at what level the controversy start? That's what I'm saying. I'm trying to explain to our viewers. The operational requirements are laid down by the special branches of the operations of the three services. They are passed on to the force structure development branch. That does the rest of the uh, process in terms of induction, including field trials. But 
cost is not by and large addressed by them. After that, it goes to the Ministry of Defense through various layers of decision making and ultimately to the Defense Acquisition Council. Problem arises when everything goes to the Ministry of Defense. So far, I have not known of one case that there is a problem at Defense Services Headquarters where bribes have been exchanged or an inferior equipment has been bought. I don't think one till now. So when you come to the point you made about CBI, now what is happening? You have a media report. For example, let's take Augusta as a good example. Th it that came question in, has it to be addressed a, now. It, take about a, it took about a year for the government to act after the Italian newspapers and the person came who broke the story actually met me the day he was breaking the story in a national daily. He showed me the documents. I said, this should concern the government. But I was surprised nothing happened for almost a year. And then when the media now, Indian media takes this story, the politician is extremely sensitive to media reports. Exactly. Extremely. And that's the only thing which makes him act. Mr. Anthony acted within 48 hours of the story appearing in a national area. Now, what happens? This is a key point, that you have an allegation and you immediately say, we are not going to deal with Augusta. It's only an allegation. You haven't filed an FIR. You haven't uh, done any charge sheet. There is no investigation by the courts. No one has been punished. Merely because the Italian investigation process is on, you halted an excellent purchase. I'm telling you, I have been on VVIP aircraft, Girish. Augusta is perhaps the best helicopter in the world for the role it is configured, that is VVIPs. And it meets, it has been specifically designed in many ways in terms of but still it has got caught, held and we have caught, lost caught it now we have lost it what are we doing now we're going back to the me 17s I and mean, here you had an excellent system now anyway there so mr yuginder narayan has a point mr. you have a good system mr. why do you want not to have it mr narayan you know the point being made by air marshal the controversy starts at a certain level by that time all these field trials are over but the question of the the you know the, the, the media the media focus starts if there is any uh, you know allegations of wrongdoing and things like that do you think that you know this this process can be any government will be able to withstand <clears throat> yes ac actually I do remember once in even in 2001 uh, <coughs> we were buying some equipment for the Navy and then we found that all those companies who had bid had inquiries pending against them. So uh, we were in a fix. So I went to the central uh, CVC at that time, Mr. Vittal, and I said, what do we do? He said, no, defense preparation and preparedness comes first. You go ahead, don't mind. And he gave me this opinion in writing on the file. And we went ahead. And there was an inquiry later on which turned out to be absolutely baseless. The complaints were absolutely baseless. So till the inquiry is complete, uh, the process should go on, the procurement process should go on because defense uh, uh, purchases involve large amounts of money and large interests are involved, political as well as non-political interests are involved. So I think once the procurement machinery starts, process starts, whether the complaints come or not, let the investigation go on. And when the investigation is complete, you can take action against the officials concerned. But if you find the platform all right, the weapon system all right, go ahead and purchase it. And I think that and no politician today or no political party in parliament will ever raise this question because if the inquiry is going on, let it go on. We'll inform parliament that inquiry is going on, but the procurement is also going on. Okay. I think we should do it simultaneously. Okay. There should be no stoppage of the procurement process. Okay. General Mehta, but the question is... General Mehta, the question is, you know, the, the, what happens, you know, generally what Mr. Narayan is talking about is, the, is a case where you have an inquiry going on. At the end of it, the inquiry finds that there, you know, there is nothing, which, there is no wrongdoing has been done. In the case of inquiries where wrongdoing has been done, actually, where corruption has taken place, what is the, what is the solution to this kind of thing if you have already bought things from the from from these uh, agency from these contractors or you know big firms oh that's the problem because as the scorpion uh, deal will exactly in the scorpion deal what do you do that that um, because again now
this is an operational necessity. And if you, you, you've got six and you got plus three, but I think the immediate problem to investigate is what is the adverse fallout or what is known. As Donald Rumsfeld used to say, there are known knowns and there are unknown unknowns and there are <laughs> known unknowns. So amongst these, what is known and what is not known? So till the damage that has been done to the operational capability uh, of the scorpion is known, I think we have to just hold our horses. No. But, but, but on this, you see, if you, uh, going back to our uh, debate, that if you Im instantly or immediately uh, blacklist companies, which was the pancha of the previous government or the previous defense minister, then you land up in situations of single vendor, that is the which point. makes which makes it a non-starter. So one of the reasons why you should not blacklist and let this uh, the contract progress or the contract negotiation uh, progress is to have a multi vendor multiple situation. Vendors available in fact, for, in fact, the for, for, for the discussion. In fact, the defense minister talks and, about. And at the end of the it. day, you come back to the same question: that what is more important, operational preparedness or probity, uh, and and uh, the the morality of the system? And you look at you look at the uh, the the, the Bofors thing. Uh, you have till date. You haven't got a gun, artillery gun, Which is for the Indian Army. Similarly, you have this problem of the rifle for the infantry. And you know, one can uh, give other examples where the, the, the negotiations were killed because you uh, found some wrongdoing at some level during the negotiations, and that is addressable as I think this new policy, policy does. Okay. But but the law ministry is is going to scoot. We'll have to we'll have to wait and watch and, what and, the and we have law to ministry see says. What it goes through. Uh, Uday, you know, on this the two deals which are which are right now under question: Augusta Westland and Scorpion. So, will if this new policy is applied to these two, what happens? Well, if this new policy, I think, is applied in a very objective way, I hope that the scorpion will not be delayed because that would the last thing we want as India's overall comprehensive military capability is concerned. But can but I pick know, up two observations? Yes. What Mr. Yogendra Narayan said about the political consensus. He was suggesting, if I've heard him right, that once you make up your mind and a given platform or equipment has gone through all the operational requirements, in the event there is any allegation or whatever, the political parties should allow the acquisition process to continue while the investigation is being done on a separate track. That's a highly desirable. I would say that it's almost utopian in the current Indian exactly. context because the political parties are baying for blood the moment there is any kind of a whiff of a and scandal. The media. And the media. And it's a vicious circle. So I don't know how we'll redress that. But I do want to make an additional point about the single vendor kind of situation because the reality is that in India, the government of India, the Ministry of Defense is a single buyer. And going back from Pandit Nehru's time to now, I don't think we should constantly throw the ball on the other side because when we talk about criminality, we talk about what corruption. Is, what is this throwing ball on the, the other side? I'm saying that we often say that so and so will be blacklisted because their actions were in transgression of either financial regulations or otherwise. I am saying that if the government of India is a single buyer as it is, that have we done enough in terms of creating an ecosystem where the incentive for criminality and corruption is reduced? And I'm afraid the answer is no, because we must accept that in India, over the last 40 years that I can recall, the electoral cycle is connected with major defense acquisitions. <laughs> and as a result, we have a situation where the highest defense decision making in this country is culpable in allowing a system which gives you these little niches for criminality, there, there for corruption. Very, very, Either very, we address this head-on, Rajya Sabha is the right place, 
or we'll be going around, you know, constantly and saying that one or the other made. is being hey, you know, sort of. No, I, I need to add just three more dimensions. Yeah, well, quickly, sir. I think number one, there is an impact not only on operational preparedness, but also on the manufacturers who are doing business with India. They tend to be now very, very cut off in the way procedures are. I'll give you an instance. A former Minister of State for Defence lost his job in the recent reshuffle because he was making noises, as reported, in the, in the Defence Acquisition Council that a single vendor uh, situation had been created for a carbine for the army. It was a small... But what is revealing in that is that particular company, which is supposed to be now a single vendor and which now is delayed, obviously, because of these clauses, it did 70% of the FDI in defense. It's an Israeli company in the last two years. Now, you can imagine a company which has done so much FDI under Prime Minister's make in India is now having second thoughts. Why should we go through all this muck? The second point is more important point is the role of the media. You mentioned that. I think the media also needs to get very, very responsible. I've just come back that from two that. visits to We're Kashmir. Talking, I mean, don't and even it, discuss that. <laughs> no, I know, but you have to recognize you're a media personality yourself. <laughs> they have to be a little more responsible and not, you know, let the cat amongst the pigeons because the, as it is, political leadership is hesitant. Last point is, you know, what is being done about the CBI inquiry? What is happening now, at the moment? Forget about before this Parikar plan comes into action. At the moment, whatever are the negotiations going on, number one point, if any allegation is made against a company with whom you are neg negotiating, it comes to a stop. Second, wherever you have done any procurement and that procurement is coming in like the Augusta was halted halfway through, just three of the 12 helicopters will come, they will be stopped. Third, and more importantly, now the bureaucracy is so, so careful that bef before they even issue a RFP request for proposal okay. to the manufacturers, they go to the law ministry Absolutely. through the and Ministry the, of Defense. And this law. also has gone to the law ministry. Very, very, very quickly, one, sir. One, 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 very quickly. You know, if you look at all the investigations that have been done since Bofors, is there a single case where you found anybody... Guilty. Uh, so okay. you are, we are wasting our time. With and do okay. not forget, no, but 15 you know, lakh crores pe pe are being earmarked for the next 11 have, years. People have been wasted this art. Anyway, sir, these, these are all these are all very debatable issues. But you know, some a new policy has, is expected to come in. When when it will come in, we'll have to wait and watch. But there are certain questions which will have to be answered by the government before implementing this policy and how this policy will work also is something we'll have to wait and watch. Thanks to all my guests. Please keep watching. We'll come back with another issue in the big picture same time on Monday. Meanwhile, have a great weekend.